Hello and welcome back to Bookish. I'm here with a really quick review of a book I just finished reading and that book is Leonard and Hungry Paul by Ronan Hessian. This book I picked up and read as a part of my effort to read some of the books from the Republic of Consciousness Prizes, I believe long list, maybe short list. This is one of the three books I picked and I have to tell you that this book, that I really love this book. I don't know if it just seems like the perfect book to read considering what's going on in the world right now. I don't know if it appealed to my kind of internal uh, Anglophile uh, love of things British uh, or English. Uh, I don't know if its message was not just so incredibly positive on the whole that it just really uh, immediately drew me in. I don't know if it's that the writing is funny. I don't know it, what it is, but I just found this book to be entirely charming. Um, and it occurred to me when I finished the book that it is so rare. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong or misremembering or maybe I'm just too caught up in, in my enjoyment of the book. Uh, but it's so rare to read a book that I think people would classify as literary fiction which is so positive um, and so happy at the end. To say it has a happy ending understates things. Uh, to say it, um, it, it's a joyful look at life and the lives of quiet people who live small lives and find fulfillment and happiness is is, is just the most basic summary, which probably makes it sound, you know, kind of too cute or too, I don't know, treacle perhaps, but it is just, it was just a delightful reading experience. So as the title indicates, the book centers on the lives of two friends, uh, Leonard and Hungry Paul. By the way, unless I missed it, they don't really ever explain why Hungry Paul is called Hungry Paul. Uh, but these are two friends who essentially are the kind of men who reach their 30s, uh, who still live at home with their families, uh, and who are, you know, not socially active at all except really with one another, and who don't seem to be missing that kind of social act, that kind of social interaction. They seem to be really content with the lives that they have. Now on the surface, you automatically think of these men as misfits, as you know, at some point they're going to uh, realize how empty their lives are and how, la how, you know, you know, how much lack of fulfillment there is, that we're going to end up with them being, you know, uh, kind of in that forever alone situation. But as the book plays out, you, you begin to realize that both neither of these men is unhappy with the life they were leading. As a matter of fact, they're both incredibly con content with that life, and neither man is stuck. Neither man is in a situation in which they are not open to change or willing to do something that changes their lives. Uh, but they're not desperate to do that. They're not driven to do that. They, in one case, in the case of Leonard, he's kind of, his kind of, shut off world is disturbed by uh, the death of his mother uh, who was the family member that he lived with and while that itself is sad he comes to grips with it relatively quickly and he quickly then enters into a whole new kind of world of relationships and ideas about himself um, in the case of hungry paul he appears to be that kind of person who's just perfectly content to live with his mom and dad in his old bedroom and he is definitely set in his ways and he definitely has his own opinions and he is definitely not sad about any of that. He's not sad about his lack of romantic interest. He's not sad about the fact he lives at home. He's not, and you know, your first reaction to th is to think that here is a man uh, who has who is afraid to take chances, to step outside that world, that something is inhibiting him uh, from doing that. And as, over the course of the book, you realize 
how wise um, <laughs> Hungry Paul actually is and how that's not true of him at all. Uh, and how his life philosophy is essentially, and one of the things that I that picked up on me, his life philosophy is to approach life in kind of a, well, when we get there, things will work out. Or when we get there, we'll figure out how to do things. And we should enjoy the things we enjoy. And we should be with the people we love to be with. And we should spend time with the people we love instead of grasping for you know, material success or job promotions or, and it's, I'm not saying that it's a philosophy that everybody has to adapt, adopt, but it certainly, it certainly works for him. Uh, and, you know, I, I really enjoyed seeing uh, the evolution of both these characters uh, who do evolve and their lives do change oftentimes in what we would consider to be relatively small ways and ways not spurred on by tragedy. Um, but find greater happiness uh, and, and without abandoning who they were are the things that are important to them. It was just, it was just really uh, utterly charming. There are a couple of things about the book uh, that maybe made it appeal to me more. Uh, one is, and it, it's not said in the book, but you know, in, in, in the world in which we live now with much greater uh, awareness of what we refer to now as the spectrum or the autism spectrum, it, it seems clear to me uh, that one or both of these men, probably at the very least Hungry Paul, would be on that spectrum. Uh, and oftentimes I think, and if you know somebody or live with somebody um, who is on the spectrum uh, and, and for whom autism is a reality, oftentimes I think that when we hear or we think about somebody being on the spectrum, we assume that this is in some ways tragic. You know, the anti-vaxxers are so determined uh, not to have uh, that vaccines called autism, they're willing to risk the health of their kids to avoid them being on the spectrum, which by the way, is just utter nonsense. Uh, but anyway, uh, but these men, you know, prove even if they are, and by the way, the book doesn't address that directly. You're left to kind of make your own decision about, it. even if they are, these are not unhappy men. And it gives you a look into their perspective, I think, and how they view things, and that they're not uh, unhappy. And I found that to be really good. I also thought the writing was oftentimes funny. The book it reminded me of the most in terms of the writing style is A Confederacy of Dunces. Now, it's not funny. It's not that funny. It's not farcically funny. You know, uh, Ignatius J. Riley is a character who does, you know, awkward, funny uh, things, and he is judgmental and opinionated and he though a humorous character and a character I think you can end up feeling empathy for is you know not necessarily uh, a pleasant uh, person both of these men are and so it's not exactly like that but the writing reminded me of that okay so here's an example of what I think is just kind of the really subtle humor in the writing it's hard to appreciate now, but there was once a time before mobile phones and text messages when people communicated with each other by sticking notes to refrigerators using magnets. It got to be so commonplace that it became the secondary purpose of fridges themselves. Families would leave dinner instructions, teenagers would explain their whereabouts, and unhappy wives would initiate divorces, all using short Hemingway-esque messages affixed at eye level using colored magnetic letters. In fact, there was, a, there was widespread panic in the refrigeration industry when text messages, messages became popular. And then, when free text became available, the National Association of Sub-Zero Appliances, the other NASA, as they called themselves, brought a case to the Supreme Court citing an infringement of their right to earn a livelihood. So, again, I'm not sure that that that, that, that passage really captures that. And, and it's just kind of an overall feel to the writing, I guess, that I got, which made it so joyful and humorous. But I, I really liked um, Leonard and Hungry Paul. Uh, and, you know, if you see this book, have a chance to pick it up and you just want kind of a charming read, which is kind of, I don't know, leaves you with a positive feeling, I would definitely recommend this book. Um, if you've read this book, I look forward to your comments in the comment section below. If you're interested in the subjects of the book, or just in talking about anything related to the book or anything else, please leave me a comment. As always, thank you for watching.